Hey guys, Farak here. All right, today I'm going to talk about power management. Now, the idea is that you have to think not just about, hey, this card counters this card, but you have to think about power and be smart about it. Let's say at one point in time, you, you and your enemy both had, both had, let's say, 250 power. Okay? So you both had 250 power, and he's sending two Sunstriders towards you. Now you're saying, hey, I can kill these guys with Lava Field. Boom! And they didn't die, so let me use another one. Oh yeah, there they go, they are dead. So who won that fight? Now your initial reaction is going to be, hey, you killed them, they're all dead, right? You won. But look, I spent 240 power total to kill them, which means since we both had 250, I only have 10 power now. He had <clears throat> his 100 power from Sunstriders, which means he has 150 power left over. So I'm stuck now with 10 power. And he has 150. He can send the Wrecker. He can send the Sunstriders and another Sunstriders. And what could I do? I can't do anything. I only have 10 power left. And 10 power, I, you know, I can do nothing. And he's going to come here and he's going to wreck my base and it's game over. In short, you have to think before you do things. Just killing units doesn't always work. You have to be very careful about not to spend too much because then the enemy can just come and hit you really hard. So try to be efficient. You know, if you spend a little more to kill an enemy, it's not so bad as long as you win. But if you spend a lot more, it is bad. Also, if you spend more, at least make sure you have a permanent gain. You know, if you spend more, have your unit stay alive. That's not so bad. If I kill, let's say, uh, let's say the enemies had Sunstra, you know, even better. <clears throat> let's say the enemy had a 60 power unit, thugs. And for 50 power, somehow I killed it. That's great. But let's say I had the thugs. And I use the thugs to kill something that costs much less. Is that worth it? Look, this guy has Sunstriders. 50 power. Should I spend 60 power to kill it? I'm spending 60 power from thugs to kill 50. The answer is yes. Because actually I'm spending nothing. These thugs are going to kill the Sunstriders, and then they're going to be alive, and I can go heal them. So I still have my 60 power unit, and he lost his guys. That was a huge advantage for me. So it's okay to spend a little more, but at least have your units left. If you're just casting spells, don't spend more than the enemy. Now I'm going to show you something interesting. I'm actually going to go into a Battlegrounds match to show you this. Now I'm going to talk about power wells and orbs. Power wells give you power. Now, <clears throat> they're very, very important. Hold on. Obviously, they're very important. I mean, uh, you need power to fight, right? So sometimes you have to think, you know, should I grab a power well? Should I not? But I'm going to talk about when to take power wells in a later video. For right now, all you have to know is that power wells are giving you power, and that's really important. They give you actually one power for each two seconds. If you look over here, the power is slowly trickling in. Three, it says plus three because I have three power walls. I happen to know that the enemy has small units here. <clears throat> so I'm going to play out some scavengers. And I'm going to attack those small units. Blah, 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 blah. Where are they? And here they are. Okay, I'm going to win this fight. Now let's look at these scavengers. They're 60 power each. So I have three. That's a total of 180 power. When units die, you actually get that power back in your void pool, which is fine because void power slowly trickles back into your well. It's not good if you lose units because, you know, temporarily you're at a disadvantage because it takes time to get that power back, but it's not the end of the world because you're going to get that power back. So we have 180 power. You don't get all of it back, you get only 90% of it back. So that would be 162 power back. This is about 200 power. So I'm going to say that we'll get something around, let's say 150 more. So I'm going to get, so, oh, this is getting too annoying. Anyhow, this should jump up by 162 power the minute these all die. Bingo. So you losing units, you know, in the short run, it's really bad because you don't have units and it takes time for you to get that power back and the enemy can attack you. But it's not terrible. If you watch professionals playing, you'll see that they go straight for power wells or orbs. And you're thinking, why? 
Why don't they, you know, attack units or stuff? The reason is because power walls and orb have something very unique to them, which is unlike units or buildings or spells, when they die, you do not get that power back in void. Let's see what happens if this power wall dies. I'm right now at 230 in void. Nothing. And this guy? Nope. <clears throat> All gone. I didn't get any void. Now, sure, I can rebuild these wells, but that takes another 100 power each. I had like 500 power. Now I'm down to here, and they didn't, still didn't get void. Let's say he comes and he hits me again at my wells. Well, I need power wells, right? So I'm going to build them back up. This is really bad. I had like 700 power before. Now what do I have? 25 and a little bit in void? I could as well lost this match. That's really bad. You do not want to lose wells. In fact, if I saw an enemy coming and I could spend two lava fields to kill that enemy, I would rather do that than lose my well. Now, of course, I'd rather be efficient. And if I could kill my enemy, you know, let's say with Sunstriders alone, oh, I have to wait for power now. <clears throat> or even if Sunstriders and a Wrecker would kill the enemy, that's better than Lava Field because it's only 100 power. But if I was in a desperate situation, two Lava Fields is worth saving a single well. Now, that's hard to understand because two Lava Fields is 240 power and a well is only 100. But think about it. When that well's gone, that's 100 power gone for good. When you lose that 240 power, 90% of it comes back to you. So, sure, now you're at a slight disadvantage, but you're going to get that power back. And then you won't have lost so much in the end. But losing wells are terrible in PvP. Orbs have the same thing. Look at that. 150, 120. No gain when my orb's gone. And I rebuild it now, and I lost that power. So losing wells or orbs are absolutely devastating in PvP, and you do not want to. So again, the two main power things you should keep in mind is counter units efficiently. Don't overspend when fighting in battles. And if you overspend, make sure at least your units stay alive. And most importantly, do not lose wells or orbs at all. If you have only 100 power in PvP, don't build a well, because then you're going to have no power. And the enemy can come, and the enemy will kill the well. And then what was the point? Only build wells if you have a power advantage. You have a lot of power, and you know you'll be able to defend it. Defending wells and orbs are perhaps the most important thing in PvP. After you defend them, and you know the enemy cannot defend theirs, go out and get their wells. Kill them and kill their orbs. But be smart, because they're going to make units to save them, and then you have to think efficiently what units should count to the other units. All right, in my next video, I'm actually going to play a PvP match and show you everything we've learned about power and about effectively countering units. Have a great day.